you know, what else to talk about, but, but passing. And so Fendi would always um, give a, a talk before he left. Every time he left America, he would give a talk on death. And so it was always very heavy. Nobody likes it because it felt, oh my gosh, is, is he going to come back? Um, but, you know, Alhamdulillah, he did for many years uh, come back and, and then, uh, and then um, he didn't come back in, to that state. He came to a, a higher state. So uh, I'd like to, I'll stand up for that to give, to ask for blessings and prayers and peace upon our beloved Master and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon the Ahlul Bayt, upon the Asab, upon the, the Khalifs, uh, and, and upon the mothers, upon the wives, upon the daughters, and the sons, and the inheritors, and upon all those uh, lovers who surround him. And, and his, uh, the one whom he called his mother, Hazreti Fatima, uh, who um, carries his, his essence as Reti Abi, Imam Abi, may Allah and, and exalt them, ennoble their countenance and, and pour mercy upon their souls and their hearts, illumine their hearts with his countenance and Abu Bakr Siddiq, has Reti Ahmad, has Reti Usman and all, all the, the wives, has Reti Hadija, has Reti Aisha and his mother Amina, and, and Abdullah, his father, uh, has read these, the, both high, high stations of exaltedness uh, to be his parents and from all those who, who gazed upon him with love and, and who desired to be near him with heard his words and uh, all those today and throughout time who have inherited his way and, and love his way and follow to their best ability his way and, and apply it in, in each time in the, the newness, the freshness that uh, Allah loves. Amen. Amen. So um, the great Ali said, uh, and may Allah noble his countenance said that if there were not death in the world, this world would have no consideration, no esteem. And, uh, and so that's a very weighty statement. What, a, what, what an amazing uh, truth that as death is part of it, it becomes honorable because death is the way to come to one's Lord. As, as and Allah has said, there is nothing that, you know, I, I dislike more than taking the soul of my, uh, my loving servant. Um, but that is the way uh, they will come to meet me. So therefore death is the door. And in fact, in Quran, it said that uh, every soul will have a taste of death. And, and which also gives it another another light upon death, another understanding that it's, it's a taste. It's meaning a taste, a thou, meaning it's a state, it's a passage. It's not a permanent place. We don't go into eternal extinction, inshallah. Uh, we, we go through it and, and we are extinguished for a moment and then we return uh, through Allah's grace and, and intimate compassion. So, um, it's, you know, we, we learn as people of the path and of the heart to, to look at her in, a, in another way. And of course, we know the great lovers, uh, in a sense, longed for death, not necessarily just for physical death, but, but they, they longed for that, that dying before dying, uh, which can happen once in a lifetime, uh, and it can happen many times, uh, and, and the lovers uh, in their love are extinguished there by the, the glorious face by, of their beloved. And, and by coming close to their beloved, they are um, effaced by, by, that, by that light of, of love. And so, um, and that's called, of course, as we know, fana, 
and fanat might be a smaller, let's say, level of, of what is mutu kabla and te mutu, die before you die on the beloved lips of the Rasulullah. So it's not something that we should fear, although it has an awesomeness about it, of course, because then the person no longer seems to be functioning in this world, at least in the way that we know, because of course we know that they are. And Allah has said of the, of the martyrs of love, uh, you know, do not think of them as dead. Uh, they live and they rejoice in the bounty of their Lord. So um, we should see it that way and, and therefore be happy, uh, of course, for those who pass uh, consciously and ardently and, and, and having lived lives of faithful lives. And even those not, um, you know, we're here to pray for them, to pray for all those who, who might have led lives um, unintentionally uh, distorted. And, and, and our prayers are, are exceedingly powerful, the prayers of the living for those who pass. In fact, one of the Babas of the Sandy Kamal Baba said, pray for the lovers and for those who passed, you know, that our prayer should be focused on those. So, I, I, but of course, you know, Fendi prayed for everyone. So that there is a community uh, of, of, of people, of lovers, of faithful, and it's not just our community, it's, there are many communities um, like ours who, who pray, who, who are kind of, serving as, as birthers for the next world, birth givers and, and, and through their prayers for the, for the next world. Um, and we know that, that they live. We know that the prophets live. If they, if they didn't, uh, this world would not exist if they did not continue living. If Rasulullah, peace be upon him, were so-called dead, uh, there would be no existence. And um, if Effendi or Hazreti Pir, the, the mothers that were dead, there would be no Tarika. We, we would not be here. So uh, Sheikh Noor, it's all because they are living and they are continuing to participate and share in our community. And, and this is the experience of our beloved Zanti, that uh, she's here, you know, and that was my dream um, yesterday morning that she appeared and I had that moment where I said, but Zanti, you know, we're going, we're, we're just going to honor your, your, your memorial service. And she was there. And somehow there was that moment of realizing, oh, right, well, she's passed from physical body, but still completely there. And so um, this is how we should view it. And so it's a weighty moment, but it's also a blessed moment. It's a birth. It's a rebirth. And um, on another level, we've never come into the world. You know, that's, that's the, the level also very much where Effendi and Sheikh Noor were, um, were positioned, located, that they saw, they knew, and they tasted and lived that uh, complete dying before dying, being already in the next world, and, um, and yet sharing, participating, being completely part of this one and, and great helpers to bring people to uh, awareness. And this life is to become mature, to become aware. Um, and even if we don't think of, of it's possible to become mature, at least that we have that taste, that we have that experience, that valk of, um, of reality, of God, of Allah. Uh, that's what it's all about. The whole life is about that. And then, you know, if we look at it that way, we see, in a sense, how distracted we are from the truth and the most important thing of this life. So the, the, the subtle transformation is to be able to be here, to participate in life, to taste, 
what Allah brings us as bounties, as gifts for our hearts, for our eyes and ears and mind and to, to participate in all of that fully, but um, participate in it with Allah, say, seeing it all as Allah, experiencing it Allah as, as Allah giving thanks to Allah and not separating it off and thinking it is a different experience. It is, you know, there's a life in the world and then there's a life with a lot. No, it's, it's one, there is no other. Um, and that, that does take a certain amount of maturing on, on the path to be able to do that. It takes practice, it takes uh, everything, all the tools that are given to us and the means that are given to us. Um, to be able to live in that way. So alhamdulillah. Um, on that level, Sheikh Noor used to say, we've already passed away in Allah. So, and, and those people are called the living dead. <laughs> and it's a very, um, it, and there was, as we know, I think uh, a, a musical band with that name. And so even people have had dreams, I've had dreams, uh, of them because of that, uh, that, you know, uh, the living dead or those who have, uh, who live in this world, but who will really know that they've never left Allah. And, and, and this is the, something of the nature of that mystical dream of Sheikh Noor, when he was in paradise with the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. the Prophet took him through paradise, first as an infant in his arms, he was carrying Noor, and Noor didn't know who he was. He knew he was a master, uh, an exalted being. Or only later in the dream, from the statements of this being, did he recognize him as, as the Prophet of Allah, as Muhammad, the Blessed, and the Beloved, peace be upon him. And in that dream, Noor, one of the understandings that he received, but he was in a, a kind of um, like a, a spherical, a sphere, in, but he was inside the sphere. And, um, and he was with the prophet and he could see that outside the sphere, so the sphere was like a mirror and it reflected things, but it also projected them to the world, what we think of as this world. And, um, and each thing inside this um, exalted place uh, would become something in the world. And, um, and so this is really our condition, is that we have never left Allah. Our secret soul is with Allah. And, uh, you know, as it says, Allah is as Allah was. So we are as we were. That's, we've never left that condition. However, we are seeing this world around us and we are living in it. We seem to be born into it and we seem to die from it. But that is all from this um, kind of play of, of divine light and play of mirrors through the prism. And I explained it earlier um, as light, the divine light coming through the prism of our soul, reflecting elements, the divine elements of our soul into this realm that we call the world. And then we are there and we think this is, this is real. This is, but uh, as we know, even scientifically, things don't last an instant. I mean, they're constantly in flux. So uh, it's not there. It's really back here in our heart that is the real. And this is also in Sheikh Moore's uh, waking vision, you know, that, that where the prophet answered his questions. Are you not also? So Noor had the daring to ask the prophet after the prophet told him of these different dream levels, which was Noor's, uh, you might say his, his quest to find out, are we in a dream? Is this world a dream? Is the next world a dream? And to each, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, yes, this is a dream, but he would give explanation of the nature of each of these dreams and uh, saying paradise is the perfect dream of Allah. And then uh, Sheikh Noor 
asked him, are you, then if all this is a dream, are you not, O oh beloved, also a dream? To which the Rasul replied, yes, I also am the dream key to the dream law of the dream door that opens to uh, the, what alone is real, you know, Allah, the divine love, the, the divine love is the real. So that's where we're headed. So birth, death, uh, you know, what we see as, as hardships, uh, what we see as, as the good, all of this is helping to bring us to, to that place, to that place of knowing uh, the real at, right here and now. And so we don't have to die. That is part of the dying before dying is this knowing this, this truth, tasting this great love, tasting this great love. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So we know our, our brother Abdul Razak is uh, in the threshold. And Kalima said that she was singing to him, this great love is a vast and stormy ocean. This great love is a vast and stormy ocean. So. Those are just, you know, a few reflections uh, on this day, which seems to bring forth, it happens uh, in a way following the, the day of Ashura, the day of Imam Hussein, and, um, you know, which brings such nobility. And we know the life of a martyr. Someone can live to what to our eyes seems like an ordinary life, but if they die, for a cause, if they die as a martyr, all of a sudden, yet we see them as ennobled. So everyone is ennobled because really every death is a martyrdom. And it, it doesn't take, you know, let's say a cause or, or something like that to become a martyr. Uh, really every person who passes is a martyr. And um, by the very fact that uh, they have to go through something that Allah dislikes. And, and to, to leave this realm and to, uh, for they don't know, you know, very few of us know in a sense what we had the greatest hopes of what we're heading for, but we don't know for sure. So Alhamdulillah and Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, may, may blessings be on all those who, are, who have passed today on all those who are passing today and um, from now until the end of the time of this world and those who have passed, all of our beloved parents and grandparents and ancestors and all of the, the lovers and great prophets. And when we look, we see that the greater part of the world is already in that state. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. With the secret heart of our tears, Fatiha, Allah, Him, and Sunny, and I say, No, nothing is going to be said, no, nothing. The Sunday was seven. This is not that of man, it of him. And he did not of him. And of man, it of him. Right here on the team. He had the number to be very out in us, but in it, they must sort out and respect him. Sarat and Adina and Amta and Ahim and Guide and Mokhdi and Ahim and what I call. And the great Ali said that he lived this life um, standing in his tomb, you know. And, and many saints actually would sleep, would build, have a tomb, and, and, and patriarchs and matriarchs and, and, and sleep in, their, in the tomb that was to hold their their body in the future. So, you know, it's an interesting way that we stand on, on, in this station of um, a passing and, um, and live life that way. So it will connect us even more deeply to life. Every moment is a moment of passing. Every moment really is a moment of what we call death and new life. There is no death without life and there is no life without death, except in the hereafter where Allah says, um, you will only taste, you know, these two deaths. And, and I hope I'm not 
misquoting the Quran, but um, after that, there is no death. And that the, I assume that the, the one death um, is the death that we die from the body. And the second death could be the, the fana, where uh, at, before the resurrection, so we're in the, the barzakh, in that in-between state uh, where we, we get to envision and see and participate. We still participate in, in the world some, and also we see maybe part of the, the future life. And, um, and then Allah says, everything will swoon except for those, uh, you know, who might choose. So that could be the second day. But after that, Allah promises there is no death. So, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Forgive us. Forgive us and turn our hearts entirely to you, Lord. Entirely, entirely, entirely. Oh, Allah, please. And when we fall away, please take us immediately by our forelock and bring us back into intimacy and nearness to you, O Allah, and gratitude to you and seeking your pleasure, O Allah. Let us taste the joy of living in this world uh, with you, and with you as our, as our way, our goal, our, and the face we are gazing upon, O Allah, with the intention to seek your pleasure so that everything that we hear and see and know is part of seeking your pleasure, O oh Allah. Every, every part of our life, every moment in our life is praising you and thanking you for this uh, glorious existence, this life, Ya Hai, that is uh, beyond ever being able to give thanks for. And uh, this to be come into existence, to have heard the word Kun, be, and to have become the, is nothing equal to that because it is pure mercy and all will return in, in mercy and, and is always enveloped in mercy. Oh Allah, please may we develop the, the fineness of the senses that will sense your mercy and, and, and follow always at your pleasure, oh Allah. Forgive us and, and make our lives in service to you, in service to, to humanity, in service to all beings, and, um, and make it the most beautiful life. And so that when we pass, uh, we have simply Laila illa Muhammad Rasulullah on our lips, and we uh, or Allah, and that we have you in our gaze, and, and that we, we are hearing uh, beautiful words of Quran and and tasting the honey of, of your love, O oh Allah, and, and have the solitude in our hearts of you, O oh Allah. I mean, all of us and all of those who passed in our lives and, and will pass ourselves included, uh, may, may these uh, deaths be, be, be beautiful and good and great and, and bring mercy as the beautiful, um, in Lahi of um, uh, the <clears throat> of um, Allah, mashallah, kill me now, or it will make all live. Kill me now, he says to Allah. So he addresses the believers, but he's really speaking to Allah, or it will make all live. Amen. That may we be given that kind of death. Amen. Amen to the secret heart of our peers of Fatima. Allahumma sayyana sayyidina Muhammad wa lahi sayyidina Muhammad wa sabi wa salam. Bismillahi rahman irahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Rahman irahim. Maniki omidin. Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina Sarada Mustakim, Sarada Medina Namta Alehim, Gaidam Makdubi Alehim, Varadwal. Amen, Amen, Amen. That's a beautiful Elahi, actually, on, on death and, and the greatness of, 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 
of that death. And let me just see if I have one other um, verse from it. Um, it's homage. It's a Filtari Jedi. And I'll, I'll tell you what page it's on so we can, you can sing it. It's on page 27 and it goes for a few pages. Um, it says, <laughs> execution by pure love, sweeter than a martyr's death. Crying out on al haq Allah's breath becomes my breath. So this is the lover uh, who, this is the death of the lover, the ongoing death. When al al haq consumes the heart, its ashes sing, I am the truth, beyond the boundary of all faith. Such a one lives only you. And one more. The secret passion of essence, Ishkala, Allah's delight, those slain by essential love, shine forth again as light from light. Amen.